Yes, it's that time of year again. As much as I try not to be totally basic, every year I feel that first crisp autumn morning. I see that first delicate leaf tumbling from a tree and I transform like a plaid scarf wearing pumpkin spice drinking werewolf. And that means it's time to make my autumn bucket list. We're going to be doing my annual autumn reset and I will take you through everything that I plan to do, eat, watch, all the good stuff for this year. First things first, we need to set the tone. We need to set the stage, lay the groundwork. We're going to do the home reset. I like to take everything off of my fireplace mantle, give it a good clean, and redecorate it for a more seasonally appropriate vibe. I like to keep things pretty simple with my decor because I'm festive, but I'm a little bit less home goodsy festive and a little bit more natural festive, if you know what I mean. I think a really beautiful autumnal bouquet, some candles, always do the trick or the treat. <laughs> it really just sets the tone without things being too cheesy. And of course, I also like to reset my closet, put away all of my more summery clothes, and start busting out the cozy knit the fall themed outfits. Equally as important to get the fall feelings flowing. <laughs> that was difficult to say. We need to make some autumnal playlists. I have two running playlists. One is more of like Halloween party kind of atmosphere. And then I have more of a cozy, calming autumn playlist. I play this one in the mornings while I drink my tea. It's a whole ritual. A little soft guitar music playing, a little pumpkin spice latte. Yeah, I told you, I take this really seriously, but come on, it's autumn, baby. We do not mess around. Now is the time romanticize your life. Now we get to the really fun part. Stuff to do, fall activities. We have the obvious ones like pumpkin picking, apple picking. I do it every year and if I don't, I genuinely feel like a piece of me dies inside. Another thing I plan to do this year is finally take advantage of being in Manhattan and check out some of the adorable cozy bookshops that we have around here. And I'm talking mom and pop, okay? None of this like, major conglomerate world domination shit. Not on my watch. My plan is to get a fall drink, a fall treat, find my bookshop, get my book, I find a park, I sit in said park, I read my book whilst sipping aforementioned drink and treat, and life is magical. Ooh, we had a little tone shift here. My apologies. Natural lighting, and by the way, book recommendations, treat recommendations, we will be getting to all of that, so be patient. If you live in Manhattan like me, or you happen to be visiting Manhattan for this amazing season, some bookstores you might wanna check out are The Corner Bookshop, Bauman's Rare Books, McNally Jackson, or Three Lives and Company, but even if you don't live in Manhattan or even a big city, don't underestimate the power of your small town, okay? Because sometimes the best gems are nestled away in towns that most people don't know about or have ever heard of. They can have the sweetest people working there and they probably need your support. Also, just as cozy, if not even cozier, are libraries. I am really dying to go to the Rose Reading Room in the New York Public Library at Bryant Park this year. It is literally Hogwarts. It looks so beautiful. Another really fun thing that I think is awesome to do around this time of year is have some themed dinner parties. If you live in a place that has a lot of themed restaurants, now would be the perfect time to go. I know near me, we have places like the Cauldron, and actually I think that has locations in cities all over the world, but they do these really cool potion making classes. There's this really beautiful rooftop bar in Chelsea called Gallo Green that does masquerade nights. There's a couple of different locations in Times Square and Union Square of a restaurant called Lily's Victorian Establishment. I mean, how fun would it be to like get everybody in Victorian attire, go for a night out on the town. I live for this stuff. 
I also used to love going to this place on Long Island when I still lived there called Witch's Brew and that was this amazing coffee shop that was all Halloween themed. I still would love to go there if I can. So a suggestion would be to see if there's any places around you that might do something like that. But if not, never fear because I actually think it would be even cozier to host your own themed dinner party. I actually did this last year. I threw a dinner party on Halloween and we didn't even dress up, but it was just so nice to be outside under the lights eating autumnal themed food, but it could be even more fun if you have some kind of dress up element to it and not necessarily a costume party, but maybe like a murder mystery party or a Victorian night or like a 20s Gatsby themed party or something. I just feel like it's a way to elevate a Halloween party. And then if you're having a dinner party, a really fun game to play would be Betrayal at, no, Betrayal at, Hill House? Betrayal at the House on the Hill or something? It's a really, really fun board game if you're into board games, which I absolutely am. Some might say that I get a little competitive. It's really spooky. You could play some spooky music. Make a whole night out of it, you know? Another thing I can't wait to do this year is have a fall themed picnic in the park. I mean, Central Park around this time of year is Dunning. There's just nothing like it, but really so many parks are beautiful when the leaves start changing You just grab your blankie your picnic basket, maybe a little hot apple cider Oh my gosh, so good another thing I really wish I could do this year, but probably not gonna get the chance to is camping and bonfires this is something I never used to do because to be perfectly honest with you I always thought about camping only in the summertime. Honestly, it doesn't really make that much sense because who wants to sleep outside and be sitting around a fire when it's already like miserably hot and buggy, sleeping under the stars while the leaves are changing and falling. That just sounds way more appealing to me. And it actually is. I did this last year. I went camping in Vermont. It was such a beautiful, magical experience. So I would highly recommend going camping if you can, checking out maybe the New England area or a place where it does get cool and there's some beautiful leaves to see. But even if you can, just making a bonfire if you could is also really fun. It's the perfect time of year for that when the nights start getting a little bit cooler, making some s'mores, telling some ghost stories, it's a great time. This might be kind of a simple one, but I think it's important to say, just going for some autumn walk. Early mornings, later in the evenings, there's some beautiful places around here. Brooklyn and the Upper East and West Side. People go all out with their porches and they decorate them and it's really, really nice to see. So I definitely plan to just kind of do some moseying, take in the sights. This is such a fleeting season and it's so special if you can live in a place where, you know, the season really comes to life in this way. So if you do, definitely make sure to adequately appreciate it. Get outside. It's good for your health. It's good for your mind. Another one, obviously, cozy movie nights, Halloween movie nights, and we will get to all the good movies momentarily. Invite some friends over, do a face mask, cozy up, eat all the food, romantic hibernation. That's my energy for this year. And then the last thing on my list of activities to do is Honestly, just look at what's going on locally. I know for me, there's some really cool pumpkin festivals that go on every year. There's big Halloween parades. There's something called Smorgasbord, which is like a big food festival. We know that's right up my alley. Now, as kind of like 
a second part to my list of activities that I like to do every year. I also keep a bucket list of places that I like to travel to during this time of year. Obviously, I highly recommend coming to New York if you can. And not just New York City, but Long Island has some really beautiful places to explore. The city obviously has some really cool things to do. And upstate New York is beautiful when the leaves are changing. So if you can, come to New York. Also on the East Coast, I highly recommend trying to check out Vermont or Massachusetts. Really any part of New England is absolutely stunning this time of year, but Vermont is a forever favorite of mine. It's just beautiful and everything is maple flavored and I, I love it. I eat all the maple things. And Massachusetts is great too because it has Salem and it's really witchy. I feel like this is almost a time of academia. I'm very attracted to places that have that kind of vibe to them and I just feel like Massachusetts, Boston really has that kind of vibe. I never finished college, but a girl can dream, you know? Slightly further away, at least from me, I mean, if you're already in Europe, then lucky you, please tell me what that is like. I highly, highly recommend going to England this time of year or Paris, of course. Course. I feel like most of us go traveling in the summer and for some of us it's the only time that we can go traveling but if you ever could I would say skip the summer travel and travel in October because first of all these places are just so romantic to begin with. I mean, the Cotswolds in England literally looks like it's straight out of a storybook. During this time of year, walking through the little towns, everything is really festive. There's pumpkin flavored everything. I will say you can't necessarily go to these places and expect to have the same experience that you would in the summer because yeah, the weather is not always gonna be perfect, but I love the rain. I am a huge pluviophile, and to me, the thought of finding cozy little pubs, cozy bookshops, cozy libraries, sipping on something warm, seeing rainy Paris outside my window, being in the countryside of England, that is my ultimate dream. And then my last recommendation, Thailand is one of the most beautiful places to be during this time of year. They usually do their Loi Kertong festival and their big festival of lights where everybody is releasing lanterns into the sky. It's probably one of the most magical things I've ever experienced in my entire life and there is just nothing like Chiang Mai in the fall. I mean these are just things to think about. Obviously I'm not expecting that everyone's just gonna pick right up and fling themselves off to Thailand, but if you can, if you want to, then those are some of the places that I would recommend exploring. All right, now let's officially talk about food. Around this time of year, I just love having at least one day where I can stay in, bake something yummy. A few favorites of mine are pumpkin French toast sticks, I've made pumpkin tiramisu, I've made pumpkin creme brulee, and pumpkin soup inside mini pumpkins. That is adorable. I also love an apple crumble, can't go wrong with that. One year I made this pie, like a berry pie, that was celestial themed. Got the idea off of Pinterest, that was not my original idea. Might I also suggest trying to make pumpkin ravioli with sage butter. So good. Honestly, it's a lot easier than it sounds. There's a recipe from Half Baked Harvest that I really love. Try it. It's delicious. It will change your life. And then there are just a couple of treats that I like to indulge in every year. You know I love tea, but my favorite tea is the Vermont Maple Ginger Tea. I talked about this last year. This smells just out of this world. When you make a cup of this, it fills the entire room. It's so delicious. Put a little bit of oat milk, a little bit of honey. Thank me later. All right, now let's talk about some books. First things first, I have a book I want to talk about. Uh, I don't know if I will necessarily recommend it. 
but here we go. I found this book called The Cafe Between Pumpkin and Pie. It sounded like exactly what I was looking for. When I see these types of books, this is what I imagine I want to read every year around this time. I don't expect these to be the most incredible works of prose, but I do expect them to be cozy, to be sweet. I guess I also kind of expect these to be wholesome. Do you see this cover? Do you hear the fact that it takes place in Moonbright, Maine? You read the back? I mean, it's talking about the sweet little corner cafe with all the townspeople coming around for the famous whoopie pies, the heartfelt hospitality, and the chance to hear the town's spookiest stories and local legends whispered to the younger generation. Does any of that sound like it's going to be a sex book? Okay, now, do I care that it's a hot, steamy romance novel? No, I don't, I couldn't care less. But it's just not what I was expecting. I was expecting something completely different. And then all of a sudden I start reading things like her shoulder brushed his chest and her feminine scent enveloped him. Awareness jolted him, sudden and unexpected. A sexual surprise, like, excuse me, excuse me. I just, <laughs> I just really, thought that it was gonna be something totally different. I think I was first tipped off when like some of the dialogue was just really, really weird to me. First of all, I was a little bit confused because they kept referring to one of the main characters, Grandpa, as Granddad. So we just keep hearing Granddad, Granddad, Granddad. And then out of nowhere, they just start calling him Gramps. And I'm like, okay, we're just calling him Gramps now? Like what, why? And then they also like apparently he fought in the war or something. So then, so now there's just three different terminologies for him. He's either called Granddad, Gramps or the major or the general or something like that and I'm just like what is going on and then I Just like some of the dialogue just doesn't even seem like human beings would ever say that like they'll just they, they will literally say something like once we have made it to the cafe I will walk in and then speak with my grandfather for a moment and then I will come back down and sit with you like who talks like that? There are literally points where it honestly just seems like someone took a bunch of random words like pumpkins, sex, and I don't know, cafe, and, and the general, and dumped it into like some AI program and, and this just spat out a book. I'm sure these authors, first of all, they're way more successful than I am, okay? They've actually published a book, which is far more than I can say I've ever done with my life. But, you know, it's just like, listen, if you're trying to turn me on, first of all, I wasn't even prepared to be turned on, but second of all, if you're trying to turn me on, then like, normal dialogue, would do the trick. Yeah, so anyway, that was my scathing review. I just, I really wish they had prepared me. That's all. Like, you could have said something here. I will give you the exact quote that you could have put on the back of the book to prepare us. A little bit of pumpkins, a lot of spice. You know what I mean? Okay, that's all you need to say. I'm sharing this book, A, because quite honestly, I think it's hysterical. B, if you're into this kind of thing, girl, do you. You could have a cozy night and like, a different kind of way, I guess. Also, I would like to know, where is the book that I originally wanted? Like, does anybody have a suggestion of the sweet, wholesome version of this with normal dialogue? Okay, that's all I'm asking for. My next book recommendation, I'm gonna be honest with you, I have not read it yet, so if, if it's some like hot, spicy, steamy romance, do not blame me. I really doubt that because I'm pretty sure this is a children's book, but it's called The Time of Green Magic. And I thought this just seemed really sweet, wholesome, no womanly sense enveloping anybody. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, I just found the cover to be really intriguing. Did read the synopsis and it does seem really good. And if there starts being any funny business, I'm gonna be pissed. Another book that I have to recommend is October Country by Ray Bradbury, which again, I have not read, but 
Again, I'm gonna assume Ray was not getting down and dirty. Well, maybe he was, but that's his business, okay? Now my final recommendation, please stick with me. I know what you're thinking, Harry Potter, obviously, but listen, just wait, okay? Just give me a second here. If you've never listened to the audiobooks before, and this is not an Audible sponsorship, by the way, I don't get sponsorships, and I don't even like Audible, so. But if you've never listened to the audio version, you have to, because it is a totally different sensory experience than just reading the books, which like, I always love reading the books every year. His voice is just so calming, so soothing. To his word to fudge and straight back into the muggle world. Really brings the characters to life. So if you do want to listen to that, then I would recommend using one of the free library apps like Libby, and you can download them for free without having to pay a subscription service. It's the perfect cure for insomnia. You can just drift off to sleep hearing this rich, deep man's voice talk like Professor McGonagall. It's amazing. <laughs> and finally, let's talk about stuff to watch. I have some more obvious recommendations, but I also have some things that I feel like are a little bit less obviously autumnal and more just kind of cozy and good for this time of year without being super on the nose. First things first, over the garden wall. It's so sweet. It's honestly such a good story. Spooky, a little creepy, but sweet and wholesome. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because you probably already know it and you probably already know how amazing it is. This is one that I've mentioned before, but there's an anime called Laid Back Camp and it's really sweet. It's actually the thing that, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, inspired me to go camping in autumn in the first place. This group of girls just have this camping club and they go all around Japan camping in various places, roasting marshmallows, cooking over the fire. Really sweet and I highly recommend checking it out. One of my favorite Halloween movies is Beetlejuice. It's such a classic. It's honestly really funny. It's just super whimsical. If you haven't seen it before, it's about this couple who just moves into their brand new house and they end up tragically getting turned into ghosts that are haunting the house. So now when the new family moves in, hilarity ensues and Beetlejuice is the person that ghosts can call to help them kind of exercise humans out of their house instead of <laughs> humans exercising the ghosts out of their house. I would also really recommend watching Notting Hill. It's not necessarily full-blown Halloween or even full-blown autumn, but it has Julia Roberts, it has Hugh Grant, it has cozy bookshops. It takes place in England. I feel like we're just hitting all the right points that we want for this season. Julia Roberts is a famous actress that ends up, well, in the movie, I mean, not like in real life. <laughs> she plays this famous actress who kind of accidentally gets involved with Hugh Grant's character, and he's just the owner of this really sweet little bookshop. It's about their worlds colliding. You know, she's from this total world of fame and celebrity status. It's a really precious little love story. I love it so much. I would also really recommend a couple of Ghibli films. Obviously Kiki's Delivery Service. She's a witch. It's super perfect for Halloween and autumn. But also a little bit less obvious, Whisper of the Heart is one of my all-time favorite Ghibli films. I feel like I don't ever really hear people talking about it that much, but it's so cute. It's about this girl, she wants to be a writer, and it's kind of this coming of age story as she finds herself and her voice being a writer, and she stumbles upon this 
little antique shop that seems like it has a little bit of magic to it. So I do think it would be a really good fall movie. It's adorable, it's cozy, you're not gonna regret it. And then my last couple of movie recommendations are Woody Allen films. We have Annie Hall, which is incredible just for the style inspiration. Annie's outfits are so good. It takes place in the 70s, so really everybody's <laughs> outfits are incredible. A Rainy Day in New York. It has Timothy Chalamet, Selena Gomez, and, oh my gosh, what's her name? Elle. Elle Fanning. It's a star-studded cast is all we really need to know. They just go on this wild adventure. There's a little bit of an academic kind of vibe. There's the coziness of the rain. I just feel like it's the perfect movie to watch when it's already a rainy, dreary day outside anyway. And it kind of makes it seem a little bit more romantic and a little bit less dull, you know. All right, well, that's everything on my autumn bucket list for this year. I hope you got some inspiration. I hope you liked some of the suggestions. I'm a really festive person. I love the changing seasons and I love to kind of have an excuse to refresh, reset. It's just fun. Have a little bit of fun this year if you can. And uh, yeah, happy fall.